Good morning, all. Good morning, everyone. We'll get started in just a few minutes to give everyone time to join. There it goes. Howdy, howdy, howdy. We'll give it a few more minutes for folks to be able to come on in. All right, we're three minutes in and I'm seeing some people kind of drop on in as well. So I'll go ahead and get us started. Emily, if you're ready. Yeah. Cool. All right. Here, there, we've done all the things. You've made it here, the logistics and agenda. Rock and roll. All right. <laughs> um, so there is an open issue on the repo 961 around getting more sustainable contributions, um, both within the tags as well as back to projects within the community and understanding a little bit more around the handoff and the health between the talk and the tags, as well as the work that's being requested of the tags in response to TOC activities, whether or not that sandbox considerations, if it's incubation due diligence, graduation, and even potentially post-graduation associated with projects. Um, that being said, let me pull up the issue real quick. Um, we had one of these meetings back in October of 2022 to start having some of these discussion items. Um, for a quick refresher on that, we did talk about talk and tag engagement on projects. We also talked about um, the need for better onboarding of new tags and some of the existing challenges we've experienced transitioning between working groups and tags and when to make a decision between those. Um, also as well, um, discussing whether or not the existing charters of the tags are still serving the needs of the community or whether or not there's potentially some constraints associated with making progress in those areas. Um, we've also talked about succession planning and potential co-chair rotation to avoid as much burnout as possible, burnout as possible, as well as um, decrease the um, 
eliminate potentially the bus factor um, from our community as well as driving more participation from members, um, having a higher level of activity within the existing tags, um, and making sure that our tags are empowered to set and achieve their goals, objectives, and whatever deliverables they and their communities desire as long as it's within the alignment of the group. Okay. 961. Does anyone have any understanding that that is not what is up for discussion today, or did they have any other items that they wanted to add? I will keep an eye on chat. Keep rolling, Emily. Okay. So there was an initial PR that was filed associated with issue 961 called the Cloud Native Milestones. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a recommendation for us to try to get more sustainability both within the sandbox as well as project maturity and help guide some of these projects. So we're not hitting the larger gates within the community, such as incubation due diligence and projects are going back to tags all at once with a large amount of requests for assistance and support and the tags simply do not have the volunteer resources or the members that are able to commit to the timeline that projects are actually looking for. There has been some discussion on the issue as it exists today, well, on the PR around the milestones, and I've done my best to kind of resolve as many of them as I can. Has everyone had a chance to look at those? Let me grab the PR for everyone and post it in chat. Okay. I'm going to take a step back because I'm not getting a lot of responses from anyone. Um, what can we do to help facilitate some of the discussion around both the this particular issue 961 and the corresponding PR or any of the other items I called out previously for today's meeting? Emily, I just joined and I probably missed context. I apologize, but um, one thing that does, having read the issue, one thing that's that I'm ignorant of and maybe has been done, is there an initial draft for, um, like like the issue describes the topic and, and kind of calls out into question. It asks some great questions, but is there a draft of a proposal or? For the PR, yeah, yeah. so for the defining sandbox exit criteria, potentially creating milestones to incubation, that is in PR number 997. So the, that PR includes an outline of what sandbox archival actually looks like, potentially from a TOC perspective based off of what we've seen in some of these projects, although we have not actually gone down the path of actually executing on a sandbox archive, but considering the amount of sandbox projects that we have, some of them are significantly more active in others, while some are just slower growth areas because we're still testing the waters in that particular technology domain, but really wanting to identify progress within the sandbox on their capability to achieve maturity and then eventually move on to incubation. Nice. Yeah, perfect. I totally missed that there's a PR linked to the bottom of the issue. Yeah, that's no great. No worries. Actually, oh yeah, I take it back. Is the I think that's just a reference to a different issue. So I don't know that the PR is linked to 961, hence my ignorant question. Ah, I will fix the linking. Oh, nice. Okay. I will do I will do my reading. Any other questions about that? Any other opinions? If we haven't had everyone look at it, that's completely understandable. I just want to ensure that folks are aware of it. If we need to have a discussion on it, we can do that on the PR. We could do it on the call. We can move on to one of the other topics. I've posted summaries in the chat. I 
Is it possible to have a working document uh, so that people can actually collaborate on, on, on this? On the PR or on the other topics? Uh, well, I'm looking at the milestones issue, right? So, I mean, if people have suggestions, maybe they can add it to the working document before actually, I mean, they can, they could add it to the GitHub PR too, but I don't know. I mean, it just, it sounds like um, maybe, a, you know, working document might be a better way to just throw people's ideas there. So. Okay. I guess that's just a thought, right? So. I can certainly take an action to do that. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. Um, do you have any comp any like a summary of what what this means in, in general, like for mm -hmm. projects? Does it, it means like they're going to? I mean, I'm kind of reading through it. This is like the first time I've, I'm reading through it, right? So, um, yep. We so yeah, the in, the intent behind the the cloud native milestones PR is to resolve issue 961. It breaks it up into two primary areas. One is defining the criteria by which the TOC can evaluate sandbox projects for archive. We already have an archive process in place within the foundation. However, we've not been uh, applying it to sandbox projects as part of an annual review to understand the progress that they're making. So this is more formally provides some guidelines for the TOC when evaluating those projects because sandbox is originally designed to be more of a experimental area to figure out whether or not this is a community growth opportunity or if this is an emerging technology space, will, will it be successfully adopted by our end users and adopters within the community? Um, and this will allow us to kind of clean up the sandbox for projects that have uh, languished for an extended period of time and we're not seeing any progress. It doesn't necessarily mean that the project is a failure. It doesn't mean that the project just doesn't work within the foundation. It could mean that we're not going to see the level of maturity or it's not going to get the level of adoption that we might reasonably expect from our projects. So that's the first portion of the PR. The second portion of the PR is to define milestones as guiding points for projects to achieve a higher level of maturity moving throughout the CNCF life cycle. This is moving from sandbox to incubation to graduation and then sustaining a higher level of maturity beyond graduation. Milestones are not intended to replace any of the graduation requirements. They are there to serve as guiding points. Not all projects will feel the need to achieve any of the milestones or even some of them. Many of them are technology or domain specific for a project and it could also be community driven for a project. However, they are instances of activities that successful projects have undertaken in the past that have set them up for success later. Was that helpful? Yep. Uh, pretty much sums it up. Yeah, and, and I think uh, the idea here is just the uh, this is not a like some process that needs to be followed, but it's more like guidance. Correct. Uh, like some projects may find some things better or could be successful at some things where other projects can't, right? But but they're not, but they can achieve their requirements in different ways. Jaffe, did you have a comment? I saw you come off mute. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm thinking for the so the two parts, right, for the archiving of the sandbox projects. Um, have we sent emails specifically specifically to those sandbox project maintainers, ask their feedback, because that may, you know, uh, impact their, you know, um, their work. So maybe they want, they didn't know this, they are not aware of this, so they can catch up if they want to, you know, keep that sandbox in a healthy status. 
I think that would be helpful rather than later on, you know, when we start to archive, you know, uh, sandbox project, they will be surprised. So the existing archive process does kind of describe that a little bit from uh, nominating via the via an issue as well as contacting the maintainers of the project. However, Sandbox projects do have an annual review that they submit to the TOC each year that we follow up with them on. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's good. I understand that part. But I'm thinking, you know, if this we put this, um, we merge this PR, right? Um, um, I think probably it's, it's good we asked for their input or their feedback on this. I don't know whether we have a, a we, I think we should have a list of those um, party owners, right? We do, but the problem is there's going to be like a thousand of them. So <laughs> I think I would limit down the, uh, uh, the level of uh, request that I think I would put in. So if you can form what the question is, yeah, we can do that. But understand there's there's a lot. Oh, okay. I think the question, the, the question you just asked for their input to give them a heads up. Say, you know, we're going to have this, you know, PR, which will be, you know, may, you know, relate to your project status, may potentially impact your project, something like that. Yeah, see, actually, I think the place to be able to put that is actually the TOC list, because that's where everyone's going to be looking. Um, so yeah, TOC list, mailing list. We can certainly call that out when we push this for uh, the two week public comment, but we wanted to socialize this with the tags first for their feedback. Justin and Duffy. I was wondering if we'd know how much the tags actually interact with the sandbox project after. Okay. A lot of a lot of sandbox projects now. I'm kind of wonder, kind of curious if we have any idea how many of them are engaged with tags now and how many are not. I mean, I can speak here for app delivery and our experience is usually we see projects showing up usually when before they want to enter sandbox to to get some feedback from the tag and like kind of test the waters, get some input, usually some some guidance, and then the next time we usually see them. Yeah, when they apply for incubation, and there's very little in between of of interactions. Um, I don't know whether this is specific to tech app delivery, but this is very much uh, our experience. Um, that we usually like they yeah, they're not even leveraging the um, the community or in the engagement model with the techs that much. But we have other tech leads here as well. Maybe their experience yeah. is different. Yeah, for tag network, um, Alois characterized it. Precisely. That's our same experience as well. Yeah, I think for TAG runtime, we reach out to a lot of the projects that have actually um, applied for Sandbox. Like the, we look at, uh, we used to look at the spreadsheet, but I think the spreadsheet is, there's some other place where we can see the Sandbox projects and we reach out to them and ask them whether they want to present in our meeting. So that's how we engage them. But Typically, we engage them just once, maybe at least like once a year at the most. Uh, sometimes some of the projects come back, but uh, typically that's like when they want to go to like a different level, like incubation or graduation. I think there's so many sandbox projects now that it's kind of hard to keep track. Maybe it might be good to have some sort of invest in some sort of automation that, for example, like for the annual reviews, instead of like manually sending, you know, requests for annual reviews. I'm, I'm not really sure if they're actually the projects are keeping track of this, but I'm, I mean, I think from the maybe CNCF point of, point of view, they, it will be good to have some sort of automation that reminds them that maybe the project is it's due for annual review or maybe you know, remind them that it might be good to engage the tax for, you know, an update on the project. Ricardo, you're actually like touching on something that I was working on for not last week, but the week before moving all of the annual reviews over into the landscapes. They're available, they're visible and people like nowhere to be able to find them. Great, great. So like, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're slightly ahead of me and also like I'm slightly ahead of you. So. 
but yeah, that is something that we're thinking about. I have two things to add as well. One, um, it'd be it would be good probably to document in the archiving process. Is there a measure? Is there a mechanism by which they can find their way back out of it? Um, or if that's like if the archival is the, if the you know like what is the is that the end of the line for that project or is there a way for them to find their way back into this when they resubmit like how would they if the project sparks new life you know like what happens next um and then the the second point is i see a lot of reaching out to different groups but i wonder if there's also a way either for different tags to create milestones that make sense specifically for them and then to pull them in in that way right so that like if you if this is a storage project then tag storage would have particular milestones that might make sense for a storage project um because clearly like the tag security does have milestones that, that do make sense for the security side of things um and i'm wondering if like if there are other tags that have um, things that would fall within a particular um vertical that they that they represent that they want to include as milestones so duffy to your first point um I've, I've answered that in chat it's already listed over in like the archiving like process as well um and any project that's been archived can come back and reapply if they're active again just normal process proposal uh, i'll let the tag folks kind of speak towards like other milestones or emily can think about that as well but the first one that's already covered we're, we're good on that one oh yeah, neat. Um, I know we have Dawn on the line and tag contributor strategy seems like the one that would also have like milestones directly. Yeah, I was about I was about to chime in. Um, <laughs> thanks, Amy. Uh, yeah, so I think I think tag contributor strategy also has some milestones that we'd probably want to add in particular around things like like governance and contributor ladders. And and some of the the things that we would like projects to have in place. And I think I think having some of this in the milestones will help people start thinking about it before they get to graduate it, because that's that's pretty late to be um, formalizing the governance model, which is I think where we where we have it now. So we can we can take this back to tag contributor strategy and talk about what we might need from a milestone perspective. But yeah, I think that's a really good point. So it sounds like there's um, a fair amount of agreement from the tag leadership around development of some form of milestones for each of their domain areas. Would you all agree? See some head nods. Okay. Um, so what I'll propose is that um, we'll let this sit with the tags probably for about a month because I know everyone has different meeting times um, and whether or not you all would like to have your milestones within the repo, comment them on the PR or extract some of the milestones on the PR into those within your repo. Um, we can certainly send this out to the TOC mailing list to get some finalization from everyone and then we can move forward with a formal public comment period associated with all of these and get everything merged in within the next two months. Does that sound reasonable? Hey, sorry, I joined late. Uh, so regarding the milestones, uh, is this something that each tag will be responsible for defining what other milestones? That was what we were discussing, yes. Okay, yeah, sure. Sounds good. They don't need to be very robust. We can just start with something simple and lightweight for the common problems that projects approach you about or uh, common challenge areas that um, you're seeing with projects as part of their uh, transition through the CNCF life cycle. Sure. Okay. Um, any other comments, suggestions on this topic? Ricardo, you came off mute. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about the uh, milestones. I think that they they should be pretty similar between the different tags. So I, don't, I mean, there might be a few things here and there that are uh, unique to each tag, but in general, you know, I basically, I don't see how, for example, tag runtime will be very different from like a general milestone. like maybe something related to runtime projects that is slower or faster, but but in general, I think they, they will be pretty similar. And I think it will be great for all, each one of the tags to chime in, but uh, 
you know, just that's just my my take on that. Yeah, I think well, one of the easiest questions to to the sandbox projects might actually be if they stay in sandbox for quite a while and did not apply for incubation, what's actually holding them back and which criteria they're missing and how they're trying to achieve this. So this would be one way to actually track progress as well, because there are well-defined criteria for, for moving from sandbox to incubation. And this would help to identify on the one hand problems. And on the other hand, does the, pro does the project have an idea on how to reach this? So whether it's more on the governance side, it's more on the adoption side. And then like regular review this maybe together with uh, with the tech. Not, not review in a sense that we tell them, okay, you did this wrong, but rather like have a discussion. Obviously ask them to work closely with tech, contribute the strategy and let us to resolve those issues. But this would also help like almost allow the roadmap how they want to move in a certain direction. Because we assume, I think that projects eventually want to move from sandbox to incubation. And I think they should kind of have a roadmap for this. So this might be helpful. And would apply across all tags and all projects, pretty much. Agreed. That's certainly something we can look at, at least as part of the annual review um, with some of those sandbox projects. Amy, do you recall if we have a similar question like that on the existing annual review form for projects around what they feel is holding them back from seeking incubation? It's not what's holding you back. It's are you ready? Do you feel the project is ready for incubation? It's not like what's holding you back. And like sometimes like the, we, we will sometimes get answers that say like, um, yeah, we need more adoption or no, we're not quite there yet. Or like something like they'll be pretty direct about where the project is, but it's usually never like the, this is holding us back and this is something that we need more help with. Um, one of the things we do do as like the annual reviews complete is uh, send out a note from tech contributor strategy, which is basically like inviting them to like, hey, you've gotten through your annual review, come on by. Um, and, and that I think has worked fairly well for that particular tag. So basically we can add on app delivery questions in there if we need to. Any other thoughts, perspectives, recommendations associated with this? Sorry, Amy, are, are, are the annual reviews available anywhere now? You said you were adding this landscape, which is great. So right? they're so always over on the TOC repo, always. Um, <laughs> but they're actually linked now for like, if if we had some of them that were out there, they're now over in the landscape data as well. And uh, we're working with the landscape team to be able to kind of expose that more in the uh, the, the landscape cards. Because there, there is, in fact, a lot in the repo. It happens. Okay. Um, so the next topic that we have on the agenda is around new tag onboarding. Um, we recently had the environmental sustainability, sustainability tag join us. We did have some challenges initially associated with bringing them on board. The TUC wanted to explore um, the viability of it as a working group initially, but due to some lack of governance on the TUC repo and lack of clarity and direction, um, we did have some challenges and then converted them over into a tag. So for future tags coming on board, either converting out of working groups or if there is enough of a community driven activity in a known and well documented and established need for a tag associated with that, what recommendations do the existing tags have on ensuring the next one is a higher likelihood of success, both in attracting contributors or developing and, and setting standards on their own governance, meeting cadence, kind of execution of their charter and, and goals and objectives of those groups. Did you do you have a list of some of the challenges that you ran into? Um, um, Go ahead. I don't know that we've taken the time to actually write them down. 
Um, and I know that I personally have not had uh, the time to meet with any of the existing co-chairs of the new tags um, to understand how we could have been more supportive with them. And I think that's something that I would like to have them um, come forward and talk about, or even with the existing tag co-chairs, um, where they're experiencing some of the challenges in both the execution and the management of the tags, their community, their work goals, objectives, and deliverables that they're looking for. So that, that's kind of what this is, is I know that there were problems I don't know what they all are. I'd like to hear from you all. I think if the, maybe around finding the documentation, how to elect uh, tag chairs and tag tech leads, um, I think maybe the could be a challenge, right? Like I, I know that stuff is in the TOC repo, but maybe some folks might have actually had a hard time finding it but yeah so that's that's one aspect of maybe improving documentation or or way to find documentation on how to onboard the tag or how to maintain the tag uh, chairs or or actually um find new tag chairs or 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 you know you have like an election for the tag or like has to go through a TOC where they need to get uh, voted in and that type of stuff, right? So if it could be, you know, documented, it might be more helpful. And I think a lot of the tags struggle with the same things that the open source projects struggle with, right? It's It can be hard to find people who are passionate about some of this, some of these topics. This is something that Josh Burkus and I have talked about quite a bit because Let's face it, there aren't a lot of people who are as passionate about open source project governance as, as Josh and I are. And so, you know, we're thinking a lot about how do we how do we bring new people on board and eventually eventually replace ourselves. Josh has been a, a co-lead for the tag, I think possibly since the beginning, so for quite a few years now. And so I think it's it's always a challenge to bring people on on board and get them productive quickly. And I, I wish I had great solutions for that, but it's one of those things that, that kind of takes time. And so maybe maybe helping set expectations that this is kind of like spinning up a new open source project and it can sometimes take time to find the right people, get the right meeting cadence, get you know things sort of working the way that you might want them to work because that's it's just not gonna be there on, on day one. So maybe, maybe setting expectations would, would help a bit. Yeah, I think I agree with that. And for example, like some folks uh, don't know how long or how much time they need to invest in like meetings or reaching out to projects and that type of thing. Maybe because everybody has different, a different schedule. Like some, some people are doing this on a volunteer, volunteer basis and some other folks is like their full-time job and that type of thing. So maybe a little bit of guidance on, you know, how, how much time you need to spend and what, what are the things that, depending on, you know, your day-to-day -day responsibilities, what you could do to contribute. I know it's kind of hard to, to be, to, because there's a lot of information that you could just put there, but, um, you know, I think any, any, any information from experience from, from the tax and people working in open source, uh, will be helpful. That's a good idea. Maybe from our experience. I think... it... Daffy, go ahead. I was saying that's a very good idea, the a summary of what the work is. Like how do you how do you engage? How would you, what, what would it look like to actually do this work if you were to come and be a part of it? You know? Yeah. Uh... I think from techs, what, what we kind of learned, we were successful on topics that a lot of people cared about and had immediate value uh, from. And I think that's what was kind of helpful. And very often, and I, I, I talk to other newer techs as well, people like to start out, we built this landscape, we built this uh, white paper, which is very often something that people lose interest rather quickly. They're kind of excited in the beginning but it doesn't really solve a problem for them. Uh, or it's not like at their immediate concern. Like in some cases, who do you get to write the white paper? Usually uh, vendors and projects who want to have their 
view represented there very often uh you get people and read the white paper who the, the white paper who uh obviously want to work on it a landscape is what you see actually in a lot of the tech goals is something that might be useful for some again it's for a lot of people a marketing tool um but when you actually start to find that the real problem where you get people involved and a lot of people passionate enough to run it because even as the co-chair you can't like run all the work within the working group i think that's that's a sweet spot that you all, all always need to find and i think that's always what you have to curate and work on like some things are moving faster others are not moving faster like for app delivery we had this situation where we were uh, everybody was like excited about the operator white paper, which is still used a lot. That was actually a white paper that worked. Why? Because a lot of people didn't know how to like properly handle and write them. That was good. There was another one about the air-gapped environments. There was a little bit of interest then immediately went away. And I think you have to do a lot of this curation for those topics. And now with uh, everything around like platform delivery and platform building, suddenly there's a big interest uh, again from people. I think it goes up and down. I think the real help and what's like, really hard is getting the word out about the work done within the tags whether it's uh social media um like like even before we had the new platform it was easier to publish videos on youtube like we had this automatic process for it um managing your social media accounts and like other ways of engagement and, and getting content out there to get info out there that there's important and valuable information for people and also help those people who are passionate about their work. I think that's that's the biggest challenge because that always almost becomes like a full time community management job. Um, also, to like to to Dawn's point here, it's pretty much like running an open source project where you constantly have to build community. And even if you have it like for one topic, once you move to another one, you might lose a great portion of that community again. So everything that can help on like making this easier, um, I think I think is going to help the most. The curation needs to be done by the TUC chairs and like helping to direct things in the right direction. Okay, this is all great. What else? Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I've been making some personal notes and I'm going to take it back and think through how we can start setting up a potential guide and some guidance. Um, I think there are some nuggets of things in here that we probably have documentation written down somewhere. It just needs um, brought to light and refreshed to figure out whether or not it's going to be reusable for the rest of the tags or just in generally for for projects. Um, this one will probably take a little bit more time. I do think that getting exposure of the tags and the work that they do is probably something that we can look to the foundation for support for and figure out what consistent um, methods or processes we can put in place to enable the tags to be a little bit more self-service or at least provide that, that um, not necessarily gloved handoff, but something to make that the level of effort in doing a lot of this exposure and community building a little bit easier or lighter weight for the tag chairs because I do know that you all have a lot on your plate already. Any other points of discussion on this particular topic? Amy, your camera came on and your mic came down. Oh, it was more like the as 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 people are kind of like you know decloaking and all of that. Like any anything else we need to be able to talk about today? Yeah, Ricardo, go ahead. No, I don't. I don't have anything. I just my camera just came on. <laughs> decloaking. You come out and you're like the maybe I have something, but no, it feels like we're we're ready to move on here. Um... Okay. Um... So we talked, we touched a little bit on the succession planning and go chair rotation um, burnout concerns specifically. Thank you, Don, for bringing bringing this up. Um, has any of the tags had any success in doing some of this succession planning and elevating members of their community to become tech leads and eventually potentially co-chairs? Are you all experiencing particular challenges? Is it just lack of contributors in this space?
yeah, I think that's some setup <laughs> lack of contributors. And, and I think there is a lot of people in the projects, uh, but also getting them motivated to step up to work in the tag, right? So there, a lot of these people are actually in the projects are busy with maintaining their project, but you know, how do the how to help them get to that next step where they can reach out to other projects in their space and and actually um, become part of the the tag leadership. Okay. Even even you know basic contributors like for example tag runtime, we have like different people join every meeting. They're not the same, so we don't. We have like maybe when Nikita has like been joining the last. Uh, maybe two months and but but then other folks you know have joined in the past maybe you know for a couple of months but then they kind of drop off and so they don't join us so they don't have that constant uh, um, amount of people I think as opposed to some something like security attack but they get like regulars all the time um, so it's hard to kind of like just groom people to to become the a part of the tech tech leadership like tech leads or co-chairs so i think maybe maybe if we could make it easier for the projects to to engage but it kind of goes back to maybe my suggestion of having some something more automated uh, not really sure like uh, automatic emails please join the tag <laughs> well don't say please right just say something like you know tag is working on these things and and, and it's exciting and and come join the meetings you know or, or send reminders of the meetings we, we actually send reminders in, in our slack channel for our meetings like a day before maybe you know blast out to a longer to a, to a wider audience you know that the meeting is happening for example so. yeah I, th I think to some extent it might also be too many meetings so i appreciate every type of information that it can consume async because it's already like a lot of meetings that all of us have happening and especially for Europeans where we kind of like even narrower on the time zones that we can work in uh, with, with the US um, everything that, that's available async uh, beyond even meeting notes and also collaboration opportunities tremendously helps um, that that's what we've seen that's why sometimes collaboration on documents draws way more people in than the actual meetings like we had like working uh, collaborating on some topics there was very much involvement async but if it would come to that meeting almost nobody would be there and i think that's a situation that we're kind of all facing we are interested in those topics but we have to align them not not we the tag chairs but but we the people being interested in in, in contributing and collaborating have to align them to our other schedules and i think that's that's also sometimes the hard part uh, for people. So I think the more we can make things work asynchronously, which is also obviously for the tech chairs, uh, the better it gets. That's why I think to some extent meetings are not necessarily the best indicator. Yep, I, I've heard that as well. Asynchronous um, progress is, is more successful, okay. And understanding or recognition of the of the reward for such a thing might be helpful too. Right? Like if we were to, I don't know, this is kind of a wild idea. But I've definitely seen uh, a lot of people doing things that I wouldn't think would be worth their time when there is like a badge or something else like that that allows them to indicate to the general public that they're doing this stuff. Um, so if there's like some way that they that they understand materially why this is valuable to them. Right. And it might just be, hey, you know, like you're part of a community and you can use these things to uh, further your career path or whatever, like, but just some some way of understanding the reward system for, for this work to be good, you know. I was going to mention something similar. I think, I think for Coupon, for the program committee members, there's a yeah. clear re reward path. So maybe we could come up with something similar. Um, I, I think, you know, um, Ricardo, the, the pattern you mentioned about the uh, tag runtime, you know, some like for some some people join for a period of time and then disappear uh, and then other 
other people join uh, for another period of time. I think that's a very common pattern. Yeah, I'm thinking how we can, you know, um, to keep their, um, to have a way to, you know, to keep their interest and have them join, you know, the meetings for a longer time and eventually become the, uh, you know, help with uh, the tech lead or tech chair. Um, I, I'm wondering, is there a, a process in place for people to know how they can become tech chair or tech lead and tech chair? Uh, like for example, take tech runtime as an example. Do we have one for that? Yeah, I think, uh, this that's what we're talking about here. So there's there's just general documentation on, on how tech chairs are elected, and I think uh, Amy chair the tech transition, and that's there's a document, and that's the other one that is there. But I don't there's a think checklist, but there isn't a timeline really. Exactly, they, exactly. Like we would love there to be a timeline, which is why we're talking about this now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but but I think uh, you know all these points are really good. Uh, I mean the the reward system is uh, very helpful too. Like what do they get out of participating too? So the, some people don't know like what what they get out of it. Um, so I, I and you know for the program committee, there's also some some monetary <laughs> reward. But I I don't know how how that's if that's possible. But uh, but but initially, I think it would be you know, good to have um, uh, the, you know, the, the gain, the gains for, from, from actually participating in the community, right? Like, yeah, you, uh, you get to, you get to learn like some of the latest technologies, you, you know, so, uh, some of the projects that are going to be used in the next, uh, maybe two to three years, uh, cutting edge, you know, all that type of good stuff, right? Yeah, I think that that's a good point. I think, you know, for people to know what they will get out of it, right? Either they will get, you know, um, more um, exposure to other technology, other projects. And uh, also if there is a clear document on the ladder of becoming the tech lead, the tech chair, or maybe reach out to them and tell them, you know, yeah, we need people, you know, to lab for the ladder. So they can have a goal, right? Then otherwise they may not know, yeah, how to do, how to, and then they just join for that. That's the same party, they disappear, not long term. I think that that would be good. Okay. I think this is a lot of really good feedback on what we can do to potentially incentivize other individuals um, to do more, not necessarily more work, but become more involved, more engaged, collaborate more with the tags and some of the, the activities that they're looking to accomplish. Um, I, Kathy, your particular question reminded me of the existing difference between how the TOC repo documents technical lead and co-chair nominations and how that is different than what the tags themselves may look to in their leadership. Um, I know that the tag security group spent a fair amount of time trying to document and refine what it is that they look for in a technical lead as well as within a co-chair they went through a, an exercise to document what does a proposal look like within the tag for someone to come into that um, it's allowed them to do rotations it's allowed them to build up their technical leadership team this may not work for all tags um, but potentially including some information within the repo associated with the tags, and I don't know if everyone has this, from what they are looking for in technical leads or what are their technical leads embody to become eligible for our nomination, whether or not it's participation in several papers or several projects or consistently showing up at meetings for like two months or maybe leading and facilitating a meeting any number of those activities are good things to document for potential contributors to set expectations on those roles at least initially yeah i think that that would be helpful you know if each tag can have that you know so people are aware and then and that may increase the you know the participation or also even involvement deep involvement yeah okay um does anyone have any other comments, recommendations, challenges associated with this topic? We've got about 11 minutes and there was one more on the agenda, but I'm more than happy to open the floor for other suggestions and topics. Okay, 
Okay. Um, so next up is around the charters for each of the tags. So we've had the charters for the tags for a fair amount of time with the exception of the brand new ones. Um, and I'm curious, how do you all feel that your charters are working for you? Or do you think that they're adequately scoped for the kinds of requests and work that you all are taking on? Do you feel like they're too confining? Do you feel that they should be consistent across all of the tags to ensure that everyone is empowered for the same level of work and activity? So I have a comment about this. So I, I I don't personally keep track of all the other tag charters. So I'm not really sure if there's something that they have that tag runtime is missing. So it will be good to know, you know, maybe um you have some general uh, general guidelines about tag charters. I I to be honest, yeah, I don't know because I haven't seen the other ones, so um, I wouldn't be able to comment on specifically. You know, I think for tag runtime, uh, the charter has been defined for I think over two years, and the scope is pretty well defined, and we haven't had any any issues issues with it or any or any need to actually change it. But you know, we we always leave the door open, you know, for for change if somebody wants to come in and. And make any suggestion and change it but but uh, the last two years or uh, two and a half years has been pretty much the same this is a small item but just for tag network um i don't think that and i don't know that it needs to be explicitly called out but i don't know that when we defined our charter that we had highlighted maybe the ability for the tag to do a poll um uh, but it's been on occasion that there's been, well, we we, we wanted to help facilitate um, information about how particular technologies were used or, um, yeah, yeah, mo mostly that. And so there's been some effort to put together a poll once or twice. And we didn't ever conclude on that. But um, I don't know that that needs to be explicitly called out, but that's one of the things that pops to mind. A meaning like a poll facilitated through uh, CNCF staff and sort of uh, uplifted or, or uh, officiated or you know whatever the yeah so I'm thinking um, we've done surveys we've done lots of surveys as far as all of that goes but this seems like a little bit more like well okay I guess it is a survey sure yes go ahead yeah, no 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 <laughs> I, actually I think you, you yeah that's probably the more proper term uh, and I yeah to, to give a more specific example to the extent that it's helpful was just like mm -hmm. if there was a a survey oriented toward maybe the the radar or uh, and just uh, one that went out to understand it oh, okay. so the surveys that we would put out so would you just want to be, align if I, if I think I'm hearing right when like the the you know, in articulating here, um, uh, you want to be able to have explicit permission to be able to do surveys that then like influence like the the end user tech radar pieces or being involved in that. Yeah, or just a subject. Uh, yeah, uh, although. Um, yes, I'm although say I maybe that... on like the the like how that is all working because I'm not sure what the end user community is doing with the tech radars, uh, but as far as the tag being able to do like surveys on them their own, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it was just yeah. I guess the, I. I'm not being concise. It was just more like a, yeah, a survey of some of the same topics, just deeper. They were like, you know, because those some of the radar surveys can only they're relatively broad, and so people have asked for additional info, and uh, and I was just trying to contribute to the conversation. That, um, <laughs> so uh, uh, let me be more clear about this. If you have actual questions, drop a note into service desk, and we'll take care of you. There, Emily, I back would, to you. I would also suggest reaching out to. Um, 
Pushkar in tag security. He led some of the tag security surveys in response to the uh, cloud native security white paper revisions that were going on, as well as trying to get a better understanding on the usefulness of any of the deliverables that are coming out of the tag. So he might be a good person to talk through about how he went through with the CNCF to put together a survey, what were some of our considerations in doing the survey questions, all of that, and the success of the responses, because we did have challenges in getting a fair amount of responses from community members and adopters. Nice, yeah. It was like like much of that. That makes a lot of sense. That particularly like trying to assess and have metrics around the usefulness of the activities. Um, I suspect this next statement is was well, guarded by people's time once again. But it would seem like potentially an activity that would help facilitate it might garner additional interest and contributors into the tags were if once a quarter or at some frequency if the tag chairs were to write up sort of a, a blog post on here's what's transpired here's what's happening in this corner of the the eco, you know cncf ecosystem or or what activities it has had and uh, that might be an activity to encourage i don't know and kind of like actually to the extent that um, tags like Tag Network will pretty consistently have a, an intro and a deep dive at KubeCons. Like the effort that goes into preparing that is about much in the same that might go into a blog post of like, here's the upcoming projects, here's one that, you know, here's what's happening with the projects, here's, you know, and so, yeah. Along with, the, along with the pointer as to how to come and contribute, how to get involved. And yeah. I'm seeing a lot of head nods about this, Ricardo. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, y y we prepare for those uh, sessions at KubeCon and uh, all the things that we write up can be used in, in a blog post so together, right? So, we're, I mean, it's very similar content and it's just a, maybe a different channel of delivering it, right? By email or by, by something on a website or the CNCF website, for example. Okay. So we've got about four minutes left. Any other ideas, recommendations on boosting the discoverability of the work that you all are accomplishing? Okay. I had a quick question, Emily, on, on the contributions that the tags give for things like the um, due diligence for incubation. Is this explicit in the charters for all of them or? Do we keep it somewhere else? I don't believe it actually is, and that might be worth something that we should explore. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe also it, it's a bit different from one to the other, maybe, but uh, I don't know, any kind of uh, tasks that go beyond the, uh, that, that are kind of generic, maybe we are, we are not putting them there. Uh, I think that's also changed, right? So we have in the past seen a lot of, incubation proposals and due diligence documents that we collaborated on but it felt like this stopped probably half a year or nine months ago i don't know whether the, the process was changed overall back then but this is definitely something we saw we have been way more involved in these in the past uh, than we for example right now i think that might actually be related to like the kind of projects that are coming up right now I don't think anything has changed directly. I think like the kind of projects that come, are coming up aren't directly app delivery related. Um, and to answer Ricardo's question, it's not in the charters for the tag. It is in the process documentation for TOC for where that actually puts in. So that's where that's coming from. We can we can certainly make those more clear. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. And, and that actually reminds me of something else we talked about in 2022 was around um, establishing better cadence for projects to reach out to the different tags, whether or not it's prior to each um, each change in level, like incubation, for instance, having them go and meet and demonstrate or solicit feedback and input from more than one tag, potentially two or three, depending on what the domain is. Um, that was something that we had talked about in the in the past. Um, 
it might be beneficial here to potentially incorporate that into the milestones from the earlier portion of the discussion, just to increase the exposure of projects to the tags and also potentially um, drive some more contributions to the tags themselves from those projects. Okay. We've got about... Go ahead, Vasila. Yeah, one quick question. So I have put it in the chat window. So last time also when I joined the meeting, I was asking about the graduation uh, proposal for STO. So um, I understand uh, that uh, the tag is waiting for some more members to join. So just wanted to know whether there is an approximate timeline by which we could get a sponsor to help us with the graduation proposal. Is this for STO? So I can't commit to a timeline right now. I do know that we have several TOC members that are currently assigned for uh, different projects that are seeking graduation for incubation or for graduation proper. We do have an action to potentially go through when we're um, reshuffling the TOC liaisons to also consider the handoff on some of these. And I'm sure Istio will be part of that discussion, but I don't have a timeline for that. Amy, do you have any insights on what our schedule looks like? Um, realistically, we are kind of working through all of these pieces in here, which is why I moved over to the projects to move levels in here. Um, my anticipation yeah, is in the waiting list, I guess. Correct. And that is in the projects waiting for sponsors in the meeting minutes doc. Um, what I can see from all of this is that, like, I mean, uh, we've got a lot of folks on the call who are actually currently working through some due diligence pieces in here with projects. Uh, as those clear up, as you see those move into voting, they'll have more space to be able to take more stuff on. So basically, like, here, here's our list. This is where we're working through. Uh, and with that, is there any updates for folks on the, um, the current list that we've got up here? Um, I know that we've got some folks running out. Key Cloak, you're in, uh, like, Ricardo, you're in public comment for, like, the next two days. Um, but everybody else isn't voting. Anything else rising? I will say that Falco is getting very close. There are some other items that I need to take care of with that. And uh, Justin and I need to circle back together. For Cilium, I need to circle back with Katie to understand a little bit about more where we're at, where she's at with her portion of the review as well as mine. I can give a quick update on Kupso as well. This has been lagging a bit, but uh, I'll kick it off uh, uh, this week. Yeah, I, I can give an update on the cryo and the Kida. So cryo, we uh, we have one more interview to conduct. We have finished all the other interview, uh, the, the the doctor interviews. And for Kida, we're starting to um, schedule those interviews with uh, um, with uh, end users. Wonderful, good updates all. Thank you. And with that, we are over time, but thank you so much, Emily, for leading us through the TOC check chairs. We will see you for this uh, next March 21st, 21st, yes, for the next TOC check chair meeting. So, thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Emmy. Thanks. Always a pleasure to see you all. Yeah. Bye. Hello.